Me have you. Steve, great to see you. Good to see you. You inspired me last year. Um, oh, your good. presentation. I'm ready to be inspired again with the rest of the audience here. All right. Get uh, some great fireside chats so far. Thank you so much for being uh, uh, flexible. Sorry, we're running a tiny bit late sure. since this morning. So, uh, Steve, maybe a little bit about you personally. Uh, uh, you, you know, you've been the CEO with West Angel for some time. Before that, you had some other experiences. Can you give us a little, a, a little bit of background on you? Sure. Um, I just have to do one one quick comment as a public company, and uh, just say that you know I'll be making forward-looking statements and that sort of thing. Refer to our website for all of our risk material. So, with that, so my background. So the first thing is, you know, we're on the verge of um, college football starting tonight, which is great. So I'm an Ohio State grad. Um, and Love it. So, yeah, looking forward to that. And I'm an accountant by trade. So even though I, I've been in the technology industry my entire career, I started in San Jose with Price Waterhouse. Um, spent 12 years there. Then I went to Dell. I went to Dell and worked there for a few years back in the um, the hot growth days from Dell's perspective. I joined Western Digital in 2002. I left Western Digital in 2007 and joined Hitachi Global Storage, um, became the CEO there in 2009, and then Western Digital acquired Hitachi Global Storage in 2012, um, and then I became the CEO of Western Digital subsequent to that acquisition. So, so. super. So the, the finance background obviously gives you an edge uh, to run the business mm -hmm. by keeping it real. Correct. Unlike some other CEOs who have no idea what's going on in the finances, they're doing a great job on the product side. Sure. Um, that brings a lot of uh, discipline to the company, which we appreciate as a partner. And thank you, uh, obviously, public information, thank you for your investment in Nexente as well, sure. being transparent here um, as part of our conversation. So what are the, uh, I don't want to sound cliche, but uh, Western Digital is in the middle of a lot of uh, 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 change uh, in the industry, a leader. Uh, um, a lot of successful acquisitions, integrations that you've done uh, uh, over the past few years under your leadership. Um, what are the latest trends you're seeing, and what kind of challenges you're seeing against those trends, and specifically, both for consumer and enterprise, you have solutions addressing them. I know it's a large topic, but around the areas that you would like to focus on in those trends and challenges, your solution, if you can give a high-level picture, that'd be great. Because some people in the room know Western Digital super well on the consumer side, but they might not know as well on the enterprise side. Yeah, so the first comment I'm gonna make is a very obvious one, um, but the first thing that, of course, we're seeing is dramatic growth in terms of data, which provides a lot of opportunities for you know, any company, a lot of opportunities and a lot of risks for any company that has to be in the storage space. The fundamental thing that we've tried to do, um, which is a little bit uh, distinct from other companies, is that we actually have the broadest lineup of digital data storage devices. Um, we're actually a leading provider. Obviously, we're a leading provider in terms of rotating magnetic storage, and, and I love it when everybody says that it's going to die and all that stuff. And um, which you know we can obviously have that debate, um, but we're also uh, one of the leading, if not the leading, company in terms of providing enterprise class solid state memory. So we're one of the largest companies in that regard, and we also have a nascent. Um, business in terms of uh, scale out storage systems um, that we've gotten into. And really what we've tried to do is try to have the broadest suite of uh, digital data storage devices in the industry and then use that as a platform or a vehicle to innovate up from there. So and we call that vertical integration. So because the, one of the challenges that we're all facing is First off, how do you store all this data in a cost-effective way? And then what are you going to do with all this data? How do you drive value from it? And what we want to have is that full lineup from a product standpoint and the platform from a, uh, not only from a device standpoint, but from an innovation standpoint that can help companies, CIOs, business leaders to be able to use that data in a cost-effective way to derive value from it. So um, uh, that's great. Uh, uh, tying to that, maybe a next center related uh, 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 theme here. You mentioned Ohio State. Um, uh, I went to school in, in, in Texas. Um, spent some time at uh, UT. We got our butts kicked by, the guys, by you guys multiple times at that time. Now I don't know how this season is going to work out. I think you guys have a good team this year, right? 
We're supposed to. We'll yeah, see. it's supposed to be the good this, we'll this year. <laughs> and actually, um, my sister went to school partially in Columbus. Great. And actually, my team just got back from Columbus because uh, one of our biggest customers is actually OSU. Oh, okay. Um, OSU sure. loves software-defined storage. They have petabytes. And I believe the numbers have almost 15 petabytes. Um, a lot of research data. OSU is a big school, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, Obviously, they use also uh, a lot of your uh, uh, spinning desks uh, mm -hmm. in the systems that we sold them with both Dell and Supermicro in this case. Um, how do you see partnership uh, with Nexenta or Nexenta-like companies uh, well, for the future? Yeah, so the one thing that's going on, I mean, if you look at, uh, it's actually kind of an interesting, it's actually a very interesting time. It's actually an amazing time. I think that there's more change going on in, uh, it depends on how you want to define it, but certainly the storage space or the IT space, then frankly, I think that I've seen, you know, in my time in the tech industry, and, and there's so much change. I mean, we're a big company. We've got $15 billion of revenue. We've got 80,000 employees. So we've got, a lot of, we've got a lot of resources, but there's so much change and so much innovation going on. And this is a simplistic statement. We may not necessarily know what's going to be the next hot thing and all that. And so we believe very strongly in having strong partnerships with companies like Nexenta to figure out ways to extend our capabilities. Um, so we don't, like I said, we don't know necessarily what's going to work, what's not going to work. We're not that smart. And so we think that having, you know, we've invested in Nexenta, we've invested in other emerging technology companies in the storage space, um, and that's a way to continue to learn from the innovation that's going on from an industry perspective, and, and as well as to hedge our bets. You know, we don't know, again, so I think that that's kind of the way that we've done it, and we want to do that in a collaborative way, and we want to do it in a way that one, obviously provides value from our, our standpoint you know, as a company and for our shareholders, but also we want to learn from each other is really the point that I'm trying to get at. No, that makes total sense. Uh, you heard the, I know you came up a little bit earlier, I was watching you uh, um, during the panel as we were running a tiny bit late. You heard the folks talking about yes. some of the trends. Uh, um, I guess uh, one area that I would love to ask, uh, before you, we had also Sandisk present. Yes. Um, uh, obviously, you have the HGST uh, uh, division. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a still separate division, correct? Correct. Correct. So I, I just I, I don't know what yes, exactly. Very confusing. Very confusing. But, but there are reasons, obviously, yes. for that. Um, there are simple reasons sometimes for confusing uh, outcomes. But um, at the end of the day, uh, customers love the brand. Uh, you guys are doing very well. Um, you're innovating. You're partnering. You're investing in right companies. Thank you. Um, uh, that was a self-promotion. I, I had understand. to put one in. Uh, you let me do that. People are asking me, well, these guys have capability, financial capability, innovation capability. What is stopping them building their own end-to-end -end systems? Yeah. Obviously, you have OEM relationships. What's your thinking about that? Uh, um, realistically, for companies like yourself, because you, you're not the only one in the space, right? You know, Samsung, Seagate, a lot of other companies in the space as well. What's your view about some of these component companies building their own systems now? Just like some of the ODMs are building now their own branded systems, like from Quanta to Foxconn and others. others. Well, yeah, there's a couple different thoughts on that. The, the first thing that we've wanted to do, which, which we have been in the process of doing and we've actually done reasonably well, is that we want to make sure that it's sort of like building a foundation for a house. You know, we want to make sure that we have the right platform to build from. And that's why when I talked earlier, I mean, again, I, I'm sort of repeating myself to some degree, this debate about um, solid state memory and uh, rotating magnetic storage, I think sort of misses the boat because um, I think there's a coexistence kind of theory there. Um, but we've wanted to have the right platform in terms of having a comprehensive set of devices so that, so that in fact we're device agnostic. That's one of our key things that we've wanted to do um, and make sure that we've got that set up. And then in terms of moving you know, up the value stack, um, we, there are a few things that we have to think about in that regard. One is, is clearly we have our legacy customers and there is conflict in terms of that. So we want to try to do that in a way that is as collaborative as possible with our legacy customers. Um, and, and, and so we've, you know, we've looked at that. The other thing is, is that we have to look at it in terms of capabilities. 
Um, we have traditionally not been a software company, so we've made some acquisitions in the software space. We acquired Ampladata, which is an object-oriented stor uh, storage com uh, software company that allows us to do you know, mass scale-out storage. Um, and so we realize that we're going to have to do inorganic kind of transactions in order to enable that, and we want to do that in a thoughtful way. Um, and so have the right building blocks from a foundational perspective, and then add intelligently on top of that, and do it in a way that is as collaborative or constructive for our legacy customers. That's fundamentally what we've been trying to do. Which makes sense. Uh, you know, we announced uh, an all flash array. Uh, yes, uh, with, with Super. Super yeah. Micro with yep. HGST. Um, obviously, it just came out. Uh, we're super excited. Customers are super excited. Um, it's a one skew uh, super micro channel is being sell on this. Now, uh, obviously, we're going to work with Dell, HP, Cisco. Yep. That's why they were here, that we're working with them as well. We're taking your brains and making it uh, more uh, pepper like uh, to be delivered at any given time to any customer as fast as we can in a solution oriented way. There are a lot of resellers in the room, maybe Inspires here and in front, that are looking for these uh, solutions to be, be available as fast, as fast as possible. Is that part of the strategy for you also? You kind of talked about it, but specifically like all flash arrays, you're seeing all these announcements from uh, individual companies, they're doing their own arrays. You're maybe supplier to them, but now server vendors, the large ones from China to, uh, we were talking to Inspur, right? David Lam is in the front, uh, uh, Toyu, Sujan, names we never heard of coming in, and they're gonna come to you and say, hey look, we love your uh, uh, flash, we love your disk, we're gonna do an array. Are you gonna do more of those things with the companies like that? Uh, that's the part of the plan I, and strategy? I think there's no question about that. Um, again, you know, a lot of big companies, again, generalization, a lot of big companies feel like they need to do everything on their own. You know, we're a big company, we don't need other people. We are a strong believer in, I mean, first off, we have, yes, we have capabilities, but our capabilities are limited, particularly as we look to, I'll call it, expand our footprint within the storage ecosystem. Um, we're a strong believer in the need for partnerships. Um, we're also, uh, we're, we're, I'd like to believe, a humble company, and we realize there's so much disruption going on right now in the storage space. We. Um, yes, we have a huge, if you want to call it legacy business, that I don't want to say we want to protect, but we have to, we have to watch how that legacy business trends, and maybe it's on a declining kind of a slope. Um, but we want to be a disruptor in terms of what's happening from a storage perspective. And in order to do that, not only do we need to do things organically, but we also need to partner up with some other smaller, nimble companies that are maybe taking some risks that we can't take that will allow us to, one, participate in it, um, and also to help fuel some of these changes that we think will benefit, you know, are beneficial you know, longer term. One of the things I think is very important is that we have a fundamental belief at Western Digital, and, and, and this will sound like a very simple concept, but but I think it's really very important in that storage effectively is an enabler. And, and so we are an enabling, we're trying to enable things. So what are we trying to enable? Well, I mean, simplistic, we're trying to enable broader and broader and more and more use of data, right? And then the applications of that data. And it's a, exactly, it's a virtuous cycle. The more and more that we can enable cost-effective utilization of data, the more all of you are going to want more storage devices to store that data. And that's why when I come back to this, you know, although you haven't asked me, but this debate about solid state memory versus rotating magnetic storage, um, those two storage devices have coexisted for a lot of times. And flash technology is better in certain applications and rotating magnetic storage is better in certain applications and is more cost effective. That's going to continue to be that way. I want both of those technologies to be successful because the more successful both of those technologies are, the more and more data that's getting generated, the more and more it needs to be stored. And so it's this virtuous thing. But we're clearly not going to have hard disk drives and cell phones. But if you didn't have all the rotating magnetic storage in the cloud, you wouldn't have a cell phone that could access all this data remotely from the cloud. So these things exist together. Um, and that's the way that we look at it. It's not so much how do we protect our turf 
in terms of a slot for rotating magnetic storage versus something else. Right. On that note, actually tie in nicely, uh, an anecdote from your hometown. You, are you from, you're not from Columbus originally, right? You went to school. I, I spent, that's where I kind of grew up. Oh, you grew but up I was in Columbus. Born okay. in Illinois. So okay. Not, oh, you're in Illinois. Soon my, you'll have my entire biography. Uh, if, you're yeah. try, if you're trying yeah. to get that, uh, um, I'm just doing as smoothly as I can. I understand. Uh, because we, people, people want to have also an approach and an understanding of these all these successful CEOs coming sure. up. So that's been the theme. You should have seen heard the story of Jane. There was a lot of stories there when she was speaking earlier about Canonical. But uh, one quick thing, uh, it's an anecdote. Um, this is not rehearsed, as you all know. We talked about it earlier. Uh, Carnell Health, one of the biggest sure. uh, storage buyers in Columbus. Uh, we just actually closed a very large deal uh, with your stuff in it. Good. Uh, um, and we were talking to CIO. The team just came back, actually, with OSU meetings and Carnell. And the CIO told to our team, I was not in the meeting, but the CIO told to our team, it was very interesting, the reason we love Nextent and what we've done with you guys, going back to what you just said, and I'm not trying to self-promo on this, it is an actual statement, it was very interesting. We believe you, beyond software-defined, this is a new model of application-defined storage because some of my applications are going to be disk, some of my applications are going to be flash, depending on the IOPS requirements, cost correct. requirements. So the key theme, I guess you said, coexistence, correct? Coexistence, and, and, then, and then how, from our standpoint, from a product standpoint, is that how do we have an appropriate suite of products where effectively we're agno agnostic to what devices are bought when we're dealing with customers? Because that allows us, and, I, and, I, and I'm not here, don't misinterpret my comment, I'm not here to, I mean, I've talked to the SanDisk guys, I've talked to the Micron guys, I mean, you know, I've gone through these battles in terms of all that stuff, and, and my message has been consistent, but what we want to do is we want to be able to stand in front of a customer and say, let's try to find the right solution for you. I'm not necessarily trying to sell you a disk because that's the only business that I have. What I want to do is I want to understand what are your needs? What are you trying to do with that data? And then what's the device or, or I'll call it application, that's not really the correct way of putting it, that's going to help you address whatever those needs are. So if it's IOPS or it's you know, storage density or whatever it happens to be, let's talk about that. Because I, wanna, I want people to come to us and say they're going to give us the straight story. You know, being you know, we, we started out with Ohio State. Being a good old Midwest boy, I mean, telling the truth, being honest with your customers, and being able to give them a straight story is enormously important from our perspective. Absolutely. Um, and so having that broad customer set um, and where we're agnostic to it helps provide that right kind of platform to do that. Very super. So uh, one last point, I guess, uh, uh, Steve. Anything you want to add, but also leave the audience maybe with one call to action. Um, you know, I should have thought of that because you ask everybody else. That, yeah, right? I, should, I should have been more. <laughs> I mean, proactive. come to visitors.com. I think that yeah. I mean it, it'll sound like a cliche, but I mean you know there there is you know there's so much change going on. I mean if if we you know if we sort of say we as in, the, in this audience are standing still, we are making a dramatic mistake. Um, now that doesn't mean that we go and just change for the sake of change. Um, but I think that you know we're we're facing it from a company perspective. We're facing it from an industry perspective. We're trying to think where do we think the storage business is going to be, or the IT business, however you want to paint it. You know, five, ten years from now, where do we kind of want it to be? You know, where might it be advantageous for us, and how do we sort of weave our way through that, through all those changes? Um, but this is clearly not a set, steady state kind of a business. Um, and like I said earlier, the, the, the pace of change, the amount of change, um, the, the, you, know, you can use the three Vs, the velocity, volume, you know, all of that, it kind of gets at that concept. Um, and so we in this industry have to be, we've got to be pretty nimble and pretty, pretty agile to be able to deal with that today. No, let's, like Ben Franklin said, there are three types of people, right? Uh, some uh, are immovable, some are movable, some just move. So what you're saying is just move. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess so. that's the theme here. Steve, you're awesome. You're class, world class. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the partnership. Thank and you. And thank you for coming every year to this event and sharing your sure. class. Really right, appreciate it. My pleasure. It. All right. Thank you so thank much, you. Steve. Ciao. Thank you. thank you. So we're running a 10 minute late, uh, but we're going to do the.